Future Vision, Rewalk, Smart Hain and App, presented by Joe Alfonso from Rewalk on the 23rd of September 2022. Future Vision, Future Vision is a series of technology events aimed at people living with sight loss. Future Vision is a collaborative project between six local independent sight societies. Sight Advice South Lakes in Humbria, My Sight Knots in Nottingham, Sight Airedale in the Airedale area of North and West Yorkshire, Support for Sight in Mid and West Essex, Sutton Vision in the London Borough of Sutton, and Outlookers in Huddersfield, West Yorkshire. Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome. This is, as you know, the rainbow collaboration of the five uh, smaller sight loss organisations. We're all, we all sort of take uh, part of, of a locality of, of England. Um, we have two programmes each month, Living Well, which is a quality of life, and Future Vision, which is today, which we hope is cutting edge uh, technology. Today, we've got Joe. And Joe, who's your co-presenter? My co-presenter is Old John. Oh, John. Hey, everyone. And, hi, hi, John. And we're going to be looking at the WeWalk smart cane, which is a revolutionary smart cane. Um, the meeting is recorded, um, and it will be on the Site Airedale YouTube channel. So, um, over to you, Joe. Perfect. Thank you so much for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. I am so excited to be part of your webinar and to be able to share information about WeWalk. I had introduced myself earlier, but just to give a little bit more information about my involvement with WeWalk. I'm the community manager for WeWalk, which means I work closely with our users to make sure that they receive the training that they need in order to be able to comfortably adapt to our technology. We also conduct user insight sessions to better understand how we can improve our products and services. I'm joined by my colleague, Old John, and I'll pass it over to him so that he can briefly introduce himself before we move into the presentation. Yeah, thank you, Joe. So I'm Old John, I'm responsible for uh, global partnerships at WeWalk. Uh, I have been working on assistive technologies maybe almost for 10 years. Uh, and in the last four years, I'm part of uh, we walk team. Uh, maybe I can start the presentation uh, at the same time. So what we are trying to do as we walk, uh, you know, maybe for hundred years, maybe for more than hundred years, uh, visually impaired people are using just a regular uh, stick. Uh, you know, the regular white cane uh, didn't change, uh, you know, uh, very much for maybe for a century. Uh, so as a at we walk team, you know, uh, we are trying to develop uh, cutting edge technology uh, with using latest technologies like AI, uh, you know, indoor navigation technologies, smart city integrations. We are trying to create revolutionary mobility tools uh, for the society, for blind community. Uh, we have uh, our co-founder is blind. Uh, so we have many uh, blind and visually impaired uh, colleagues. Uh, with their lived experiences, we are developing those technologies. Uh, so we have a mobile application called WeWalk app. Uh, so you can use it uh, with smart cane or without smart cane. Uh, so if you have smart cane, you can use our application for free, or you can subscribe the app uh, with manual, uh, monthly or annual uh, options. So our uh, app is designed for uh, both blind and low vision people. So we have low vision mapping, uh, you know, step by step and uh, clock uh, based direction, uh, you know, uh, in our navigation service. We uh, we are partnering with uh, different uh, organizations and companies like Move It for uh, public transportation services. But Joe will give more details about each of them. Uh, so we, what we want to do uh, is we want to we want to make WeWalk a personal hub uh, for uh, for blind community. So we are uh, working on new projects like mobility tracking, indoor navigation, smart city integrations, and WeWalk will be a personal hub for uh, all uh, applications and all services for blind people. And we are partnering with different organizations for AI projects. Uh, we are partnering with Microsoft UK, 
we are one of their AI for accessibility uh, companies, and we are uh, developing AI algorithms uh, to uh, analyze uh, users' cane movements, which means we can understand uh, you know, cane angles, uh, walking speeds, um, and different uh, metrics uh, to provide some feedback to uh, orientation and mobility specialists so they can understand how they, uh, their clients uh, using their cane. Uh, they, we can understand their confidence levels while they're walking on the street. We can give uh, different confident uh, levels, uh, confident rates to OMs for different roads. For example, if you're walking on crowded street, maybe you feel less confident. Uh, or uh, in in uh, you know a strange area uh, you feel uh, less confident or uh, you know in different places we have different metrics and we provide those metrics to uh, ONMs. So this is our main purpose and uh, and we call it AIM AI Mobility. Uh, yeah, these are some of our partnerships in the past. Uh, so we got. Um, some awards from different organizations. We became uh, best invention uh, by Time Magazine. Uh, and also we received uh, Fast Company World Changing Idea Awards. Uh, and we received Edison Award from Thomas Edison Foundation from New York. And recently we became startup of the year by Amazon Launchpad uh, in the UK and in Europe. And these are some of global media attentions we received so far. Uh, on CNN, BBC, Bloomberg, Forbes, uh, we had a chance to uh, tell needs of uh, blind people, uh, and we show, we demonstrate this technology on different channels. Um, and we have testimonial, but Joe, we can hear the sound. Maybe you can check sound. Uh, maybe while Joe is checking the sound, I can. Uh, give some uh, additional information. In the UK, we are partnering with RNIB uh, for uh, sales and R&D projects. Uh, so we are uh, we re received uh, some grants from Innovate UK, uh, and we are partnering with Imperial College RNIB and RNIB to uh, develop additional technologies in the UK. Uh, so we are working on uh, indoor navigation, technologies with these grants and we are working on computer vision as well uh, so we are uh, every day we have you know two uh, purposes actually the first purpose is uh, reaching more people uh, with this technology second uh, one is you know just uh, enhancing this technology every day uh, with the latest uh, you know latest tech this is uh, our two main purposes and we have video. Joe, we can't hear the video. Okay, now, maybe. training for nationals here. Okay, in the now US. we can hear. I've been blind most all of my life. Brady Rodriguez. I'm an IT professional. I'm doing my artwork on side. I like to do sculpture, paintings. I'm visually impaired. I'm actually legally blind and have been that way all, all my life. We are athletes, artists, engineers, men, young and old. We are everywhere, in schools, in the workplace, in crowded cities. But no matter where we are, our mobility is challenged, and we must overcome that challenge for more independence, for more safety, for freedom. Meet the WeWalk Smart King that has revolutionized the mobility of visually impaired people. There were no words. I think as soon as I put the cane in my hand and I turned it on, I just felt the vibrating and I was like, oh my, and I just loved it. And it was just so amazing. With the WeWalk app and cane, I have started to feel a lot more confident when walking outside on my own. I've become a lot more confident traveling independently. WeWalk detects obstacles and allows for hands-free smartphone control straight from the cane. From finding a favorite restaurant to making sure you get back home on the right bus, WeWalk has you covered. One of the 
best ways to empower somebody is to allow them to be independent, and technology like this does that. Backed by Microsoft AI, our features are built by visually impaired people and driven by our own lived experiences. And we're proud to say that we're an Amazon Startup of the Year and a time best invention. Technology is changing very rapidly. It's important for the younger generation to adapt to that as early as possible. If you give somebody the right tools, like for me, the WeWalk, like that enable me to be independent, like I've traveled all over the country by myself and, and I can't see anything. It's so important to make people realize that they are not limited and that everyone, all of us, has the power. Hey, you know what? I'm going to go out and get out there and do something, find a new place or whatever it is. You, you don't hesitate as much. You kind of feel more at ease. So I think it's really nice to have. It opened the world for things that we could never do before. I can't say enough about what WeWalk has allowed me to do. It has given me back my independence. It has given me back the freedom to walk on my own, feel comfortable doing so, and not having to hold on to someone. Get your own we Perfect. So I love that video because it shows that we walk smart cane can be used in all walks of life by young and old. It's very simple enough where if someone uh, takes the time to really uh, learn the technology, it can be very simple to adapt to. And that's why we offer the online training sessions. So users can actually schedule one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one training sessions with myself or one of my colleagues to better understand how to use our technology. We're now moving into the hardware overview. So I'll start off with the hardware and then we'll move into the application and software. And I'll show you how we can combine both of those to be able to use your WeWalk with just uh, one hand. Let's begin with what comes with the actual box itself. Uh, we have the WeWalk Smart Cane handle pictured in uh, figure A. So the WeWalk Smart Cane handle, it consists of multiple parts, which I'll go into detail in the next slide. We have the wrist strap that's attached to the tip of the WeWalk Smart Cane handle, and that allows the user to be able to secure the WeWalk Smart Handle whenever they're using it so that if they accidentally drop it, it won't fall directly on the ground. It's a very durable device. We do drop tests on it as well to make sure that it can sustain uh, various drops. You obviously don't want to throw it around uh, as you would with any piece of technology that you're using. Uh, we have an extra white cane screw adapter. When I say a screw adapter, that's what allows the Ambutech cane to attach to the WeWalk smart handle. So what I'm doing right now is I'm unscrewing the Ambutech cane from the smart handle. And the bottom portion is just a standard, normal graphite Ambutech cane. It's a four piece cane. And at the tip of it, we have a hook on marshmallow tip. So I'm gonna go ahead and place it near the camera. It is a hook on marshmallow tip. And if someone wants to use their own hook on tip, they can replace it with any tip of their choosing. Uh, for example, if some of you like to use a donut tip or a roller tip. All right, so as I mentioned, it is just a normal hook on tip. And then that extra cane adapter is there in case any of you would like to use your own white cane to attach to the uh, smart cane handle. Now, one requirement is that the screw adapter, the circumference of that screw adapter has to match your cane because that screw adapter goes right on the top of your cane of your choosing. And that's what allows it to be able to go directly into the smart cane handle. And I simply turn in a clockwise direction, which I'm doing right now in order to screw it all the way in. So if you do wanna use your own standard white cane, we do recommend using another Ambutech cane because uh, the chances of it fitting are higher if you're also using an Ambutech cane. And we also have a Bluetooth in-ear headset that comes with uh, the WeWalk unit that allows you to be able to hear uh, the sounds from your WeWalk directly through the Bluetooth earbuds. Uh, you will get a better audio experience if you use those outdoors. It's similar to using your phone outdoors. 
Uh, you just get a much better, crisper audio experience if you're using some sort of headset device. It also works with uh, bone conducting headsets, AirPods. You simply pair it up directly with your phone as you normally would. If you have a wired headset, that'll work as well. Uh, it also comes with a waterproof leather case. So if it starts raining outside and you want to make sure that your device doesn't get damaged, you can just slip the waterproof leather case directly on the smart cane handle and it'll protect it from any type of water damage. Now, the WeWalk smart handle itself is splash proof, which means a little bit of water isn't going to hurt it right away. But as with all phones uh, and a lot of uh, technology that we have these days, we want to protect that from water to make sure that uh, it enhances the durability of the device and the um, overall uh, effectiveness of it. Uh, finally, we have the micro USB charger that comes with the device. The micro USB charger, I have mine plugged in directly through the tip of the cane. Uh, so right now I'm demonstrating the micro USB charger. It plugs in directly to the tip of the cane. It takes about two to three hours to go from a 0% charge to a 100% charge. Once you have a 100% charge, you'll get about six to 10 hours of battery life with uh, um, heavy use and then about 20 hours with moderate use. It does have a smart sleep function built in, which means when the WeWalk smart cane isn't being used, it'll automatically go to sleep just to conserve energy. And I mentioned I was going to go into detail about the smart cane handle itself. This is the portion that attaches to the Ambitech cane. So if I'm starting at the very top of the smart handle, I have the LED light that's very useful for low vision users or if someone wants to be more visible in darkly lit conditions. So let's say you want to go for a walk outside. You want to be more visible for any oncoming traffic or pedestrians. Or if you're a low vision user and let's say you need to easily identify where your cane is, you can enable that LED light on and off. I'm going to go ahead and power mine on now. And that's the sound that you'll hear when it gets powered on. It'll also start vibrating right away. That's because the obstacle detection is on by default. And on my WeWalk cane, it's blinking at the moment. So the LED light is blinking. If I wanna disable the obstacle detection, I with two fingers to swipe from the top of the touchpad to the bottom, and it disables my obstacle detection. Now, that LED light will stop blinking as soon as I pair it up with the WeWalk app. Uh, if I want to enable the L LED light with two fingers, I simply do a pinching motion to enable or disable it. So go ahead and connect it. That's the sound it makes when it's connected. And now on the screen, the LED light is no longer blinking to let me know that the WeWalk is connected. If I want to enable or disable it with a pinching gesture, so I'm pinching directly on the touchpad, it allows me to be able to enable or disable it. Uh, right below the LED light, we have a big indented circle. So right now on the screen, I'm showing where the ultrasonic sensor is located. And that's what allows the WeWalk to detect above chest level obstacles. So things such as low hanging tree branches, street signs, uh, anything above the chest, anything below the chest, you still need your standard core cane training skills in order to be able to detect those. So things such as fire hydrants, potholes, the WeWalk Smart Cane is not designed to do that, so you still need to rely on your cane training skills to be able to detect those. Um, we also have the white cane adapter uh, slot, so mine's already inserted onto the WeWalk Cane, and that'll come pre-assembled as well. So if you were to purchase one, all you need to do is unpack the cane and then just screw it in directly into the smart handle. We have the cane insertion net, which is where the uh, cane inserts into. I mentioned earlier that we have the micro USB input port. Uh, now we're going underneath the cane. So on the screen, I'm showing underneath the cane, we have a micro pinhole, which is where that microphone is located. We're developing our own custom voice assistant. So in the future, what we'd like everyone to be able to do is use voice commands in order for them to be able to control WeWalk apps features. So for example, if someone wants to know uh, what's the closest Starbucks, it'll automatically pull up the closest Starbucks within your vicinity. And other things such as, for example, if you wanna know uh, where you are, you can ask the voice assistant, where am I? And it'll announce your exact address. 
Uh, now we're moving towards the wider part of the cane. We have the power button located underneath. Uh, we have the speakers. Uh, so if you're not using a wired headset or a Bluetooth headset, what it'll do is it'll output all of the sound to the WeWalk uh, speakers. So if you're walking around somewhere quiet, you can use the WeWalk speakers. However, if you're gonna be somewhere where there's a lot of uh, distracting noise, you may wanna use a single piece earpiece, wired headset, anything of that sort to get better audio experience. Now, what's not pictured on the screen right now is a built-in compass. So inside the WeWalk itself is a compass that allows you to continue to get those turn-by-turn -turn navigations while having the phone in your pocket. And that's one of the added benefits of having the WeWalk Smart King is you can walk around, your other hand will be completely free. So for example, let's say, um, I hope this never happens to anyone, but as you're walking, let's say you fall, you just happen to trip on something, your other hand will be free to at least shield your fall. Or if you need to uh, identify any obstacles in front of you, your other hand will be free. So again, one of the added benefits of being able to have the uh, smart cane in addition to the obstacle detection feature. Now, as far as how you would hold the cane itself, right below the touchpad, so the touchpad is located right underneath the ultrasonic sensor, there's two tactile buttons. They're located there to let you know where you need to place your finger. So the way that you would hold the WeWalk Smart Cane is by placing your thumb in between the two tactile buttons located right below the touchpad. And most of our users either like to put their index finger on the side of the cane, it's interchangeable. So if you're left-handed or right-handed, it really doesn't matter, it'll work both ways. Or some of them also like to place all four fingers at the narrow part of the cane. And you wanna hold the cane at a 45 degree angle. So the image that is on the screen right now is just a demonstration of how someone would hold the cane if they were using the WeWalk Smart Cane. Again, 45 degree angle, allows the ultrasonic sensor to be facing outwards to be able to detect any overhead obstacles. When an overhead obstacle is detected, they'll feel haptic feedback. So there will be a vibration to let them know that there's an obstacle ahead and someone can either feel for the obstacle or they can just go around it altogether. A common question we get is how do I fold the cane? Uh, the image on the screen right now shows how a lot of our users typically fold it. So a lot of them create a secondary loop at the end of the cane. It is an elastic wrist strap, which means once, once it's in folded Nine, position, ten, it'll 20, go ahead nine, and just fold seven, up into a neat, nice package. And then a lot of our users just use that elastic wrist strap and wrap it around the WeWalk Smart Cane. I'm going to go ahead and power mine off so the sounds that you've just heard don't become too distracting. <laughs> So that covers the hardware portion of the WeWalk Smart Cane. Now, before I move on to the software, and the software will consist of the app itself, I just want to take a brief pause. Are there any questions about the Amtec Cane, the hardware? Excellent. Uh, now, when we started earlier, I mentioned if you haven't already done so, please feel free to download the WeWalk app. It's available for both Android as well as iOS devices. There's a couple of things that makes the WeWalk app unique in comparison to other navigation and exploration uh, applications out there. One, we've designed it for both low vision as well as blind users. So there's going to be things that set it apart from uh, other apps on the market as well, which I'll go into detail a little bit later on. Uh, but also the other thing too, is if you purchased a WeWalk Smart Cane, all of the features that I'm about to describe come bundled in with the WeWalk Smart Cane, which means you don't need to subscribe to the app. Uh, the reason we put a subscription in place is because it pulls from multiple data sources as well. And just in order for us to uh, continue to be sustainable, we just needed to uh, be able to um, uh, do it through a subscription-based system. So we did try to price it as affordably as possible. But what we've tried to do is combine all of the best features into one single app so that you don't have to keep switching app if, for example, uh, you need to check the what time a particular bus comes, or for example, if you want to check out popular places around you, everything is at your disposal in one single app, so you don't have to keep switching between the different ones. And let me go into detail about what sets it apart. So I mentioned earlier that you'll have the ability to detect obstacles through the WeWalk Smart King. We have a fully accessible navigation interface. We have things such as clock-based directions, 
there's a destination tracking feature and the destination tracking feature will count up from 0% to 100%. So you always know where you're at in your journey. So as you get closer and closer to your destination, that destination tracking will let you know, oh, Joe's going the right way because it's going from 0% to 50% to 100%. If it, for example, goes from 50% to 30%, you as a user will know, oh, maybe I missed a turn or maybe I'm not going the right way. We also have low vision mapping that uses high contrast colors to be able to easily identify your route through the map view system. Uh, we also have an exploration mode that allows users to be able to discover nearby places and explore new spaces. So for example, if you wanna, you're just walking around and you don't know any popular places around you, perhaps you're on vacation, you can enable the exploration mode in the WeWalk app and find out uh, what's around you. And then we also have the public transportation feature to uh, get to nearby stops, any near, uh, nearby metro stops or uh, bus stops it'll inform you of, as well as uh, destination tracking. So let's delve into each item in a little bit more detail. As I mentioned earlier, we have a custom built navigation that has things such as clock directions, left, right directions, as well as cardinal directions. We've made WeWalk as customizable as possible. So if someone doesn't wanna use clock directions and they prefer to get the north, south cardinal directions, they can customize it directly through the preferences menu. Uh, the destination tracking I had mentioned earlier, uh, along with the low vision mapping. The low vision mapping, again, comes in handy for our low vision users who want to be able to trace the route that they need to get to. And you can access that directly through the navigate feature. So if any of you have downloaded the app right now, in order to be able to see the low vision map, uh, you can simply go into the navigate feature. So on the home screen, go to navigate. And once you're in there, go ahead and search for any destination, and then you'll be able to hit the go there button. Uh, if the place is close by, your only option might be to walk there. And if you hit the walking directions, it'll start your navigation to that particular destination. And once you're in there, you'll be able to select the low vision map. Now we walk app is fully compatible with screen readers as well. So if you do use a screen reader, it's fully compatible with it. Uh, we have a simulation mode built in and simulation mode allows you to be able to preview your route or you can change your current location. So, for example, if you want to start from a different location, different from the one that you're currently at, you can change that before you actually start your navigation. Another unique feature for the WeWalk app is the multimodal navigation. Multimodal navigation calculates the most efficient route using a combination of walking as well as public transfer uh, directions in order to get to your destination. So for example, if you're trying to get somewhere that's about 10 kilometers away, walking there may not be your most efficient route to get to that destination. So if you select the option to go to that uh, destination that's 10 kilometers away, uh, it, WeWalk will show you different routes that you can take in order to get there. So apart from just walking there, you can use a combination of uh, walking there and then taking a bus there. And then once you get there via bus, you can get off the bus and then get to your final destination. So the screen that I'm showing right now is changing between the different screens uh, in which you would see the multimodal navigation. Uh, so for example, this particular screen shows how to get to Imperial College London, and it's showing that I can walk to a bus station. And then once I arrive at the bus station, I can take a specific bus. And then once I'm on the bus, it automatically triggers what's called stop tracking, which means WeWalk will notify me when it's time to get off my bus. Uh, so two stops before I actually arrive at that stop, I'll be notified by WeWalk to prepare to get off the stop. And then once I arrive at the stop, I'll be notified one more time to get off the stop. And that's oh. automatically set up as soon as you uh, set your destination. Again, a very useful feature. We get great feedback from our users, especially those who like to take public transportation because they mentioned that, you know what, sometimes the announcements on public transit just don't work overall, or sometimes they don't even have them. And this is a lifesaver for them because it always notifies them when it's time for them to get off a particular stop. Yeah. 
are transport features. So if you don't want to use the multimodal navigation, and let's say you just want to take the bus to a specific destination, the transport feature shows any nearby bus or metro lines around you. You can get turn-by-turn -turn navigation in order to get to those nearby stops. You can check the timetables as well. So you can check the arrival times for that bus or metro. And then you can manually set up your stop tracking by going to that particular stop. And when you select the bus or train, it'll show all of the stops that that bus or train makes and simply tap on your screen to select which stop you'd, be, you'd like to be notified on. And once you select it, you'll automatically trigger that stop tracking feature that I mentioned earlier. So if you wanna use it standalone, you'll have the ability to do that as well. And finally, we have the exploration feature. Uh, we get great feedback from our users about this feature as well, because sometimes they're going on vacation or perhaps they're exploring a new part of the city. There's two ways you can access exploration. So on the main screen, if you've downloaded the app, uh, there's a switch called exploration mode. And if you enable that switch, as someone is walking around, it'll announce any nearby points of interest. So for example, if there's a Starbucks located to their right, and if they have the clock direction feature enabled, it would say Starbucks, three o'clock, 10 feet. And that's how it would work. And as they continue to walk, it's constantly announcing any points of interest around them. Things such as uh, cafes, museums, uh, uh, any uh, art galleries, anything that's within um, uh, a radius of their walking distance. And there's also a way to access it through the explore button. So if you've downloaded the app, there's also a button called explore. So if you go under the explore menu, all of the points of interest are listed by category. And what you can do is if, for example, you're searching for uh, any restaurants that are nearby, you can tap on the restaurants button. It'll have all the restaurants that are around the user. And if you want to navigate to a particular restaurant, you can tap that restaurant. And on the screen, it's showing uh, various options such as go there. You can save that point of interest for easy access later on. You can share the location, which means if you want to share that point of interest with another WeWalk user, you can do that, or you can call that restaurant as well. Uh, one thing I should mention is we also have Uber integration. So if Uber is available in your area, you can also take an Uber to get to your destination. Now, how do we combine these two in order to be able to get that single-handed experience? I mentioned earlier that one of the benefits for having the WeWalk Smart Cane is you can place your phone in your pocket without having to take it out, thus having your other hand free. I'm gonna go ahead and power on my WeWalk now. And you can hear that it's automatically paired up because you'll hear that ding sound because it automatically tries to pair up to the WeWalk app when you power it on. You can hear that it's buzzing because that's detecting my computer screen as an obstacle because I have the obstacle detection sensor facing my screen. So I'm gonna disable it on the touchpad by just doing a two finger swipe and that disables it immediately. Now, if I want to be able to access my voice menu and the voice menu allows me to access all of the features that I've just described directly through the touchpad, what I'm going to do is with one finger, I'm going to double tap on the touchpad. So imagine that the phone is in my pocket, in my purse, anywhere out of sight at the moment. I'm going to double tap it. And I'll hear that sound to let me know that I am now in my voice menu. And now I'm under the My Places section. And My Places has all of my saved locations. So in the WeWalk app, you have the ability to save multiple locations. So for example, if you uh, visit a particular restaurant very often, maybe you wanna save it, or if you wanna save your home address so that you can easily access it later on, you can save that under your My Places. Uh, there's no limit for how many saved locations you can have. So keep saving as many locations as you'd like for easy access later on. If I swipe left and right, Explore. it allows me to swipe between those different features that I had just described earlier. So what it's doing is it's swiping between the different options that I have within the WeWalk app. So for example, if I wanna access my device preferences, sound level. I can adjust my sound level. If I wanna adjust the detection. obstacle detection distance, which I can set between 80 centimeters 
to 160 centimeters. And the reason we allow that customization is because you might wanna adjust your obstacle detection based on the environment you're in. So for example, if you're indoors, a lot of you may already be familiar with your indoor environment. So you need that obstacle detection as much as you would in an outdoor setting where you may wanna set it at its highest setting. Uh, get creative also because some of our users use it for other things apart from just obstacle detection. So for example, uh, some of our users use it to detect uh, elevator doors or um, being able to know when it's safe to enter revolving doors. So all you would simply need to do is hold the smart handle in a vertical position. So I'm holding mine in a vertical position right now with the ultrasonic sensor facing in front of me. And when I feel it vibrating, it lets me know that the elevator door is closed or the revolving door is not safe to enter because I'll feel the vibration on the smart handle. When it stops vibrating, it lets me know that it's okay for me to enter the elevator doors and it's okay for me to enter the revolving door. So there's other use case scenarios apart from just detecting above chest level obstacles. So let's go back to the voice menu. If I swipe left to right on my touchpad, so I'm just doing this with one finger. Let's say I want to change my sound level. I simply double tap. And it's telling me that I can set it to 33%. If I want to set it higher, I'm swiping again with one finger left to right. If I want to set it to 100%, I simply double tap. And now I've changed my sound level to 100%. And all I'm doing again is just swiping on the built-in touchpad on the WeWalk app to be able to navigate between those different menu options. If I wanna exit the voice menu, I simply swipe up. And when I say swipe up, if someone were holding it in a standard position, I would say swipe from your head towards the ground or away from you. So if I were holding it, which I'm doing it now in a standard grip position, I would just swipe away from me and that allows me to exit the voice menu. And all of the voice menu gestures are detailed in the slide that I'm displaying on the screen right now. Again, activate it is a simple double tap. And a good way to remember it is uh, it's very similar to how you would use a screen reader or even access uh, the applications on your phone. When you're accessing applications on your phone or when you're accessing things through a screen reader, you're typically either single tapping or double tapping to open them. In order to close out items on your phone, you're swiping up to close out the screens. When you're swiping between the different screens, you're swiping with one finger left and right. So that's a very good way to be able to better understand uh, the different voice menu gestures. And again, the screen is just showing the different uh, gestures that you can use in order to swipe between the different options. I showed how the LED light works. And again, it's just a pinching gesture from one end of the touchpad to the other. And this would be very similar for how you would uh, zoom in and out on an item on your screen. And one thing we wanted to offer anyone that's uh, attended this webinar as well is a 20% off discount code, good through the end of September. So if any of you feel like uh, the WeWalk Smart Cane might be beneficial for your needs, uh, please feel free to visit our website. We offer free international shipping. And if you enter the coupon code Sutton Vision 20, you'll receive a 20% off coupon code uh, towards your purchase. And I wanted to make sure I left 15 minutes uh, for questions. And I think I'm actually exactly at 15 minutes. That never happened. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty proud you of myself. Thank you. Can you please stop sharing your screen? And yes. then I can see if anybody has any question. Uh, uh, Tim here, Science Advice Joe. Just a, a quick one. Uh, it's a silly one, but I think it's... um just in case somebody else thinks about this the the one advantage obviously is working with the core cane skills which work on the ground and objects of course but what you add is this facility where you can see objects higher up but but how, how high can you see how high can this um sensor sense yeah it really depends on which angle they're um uh, holding the cane in so if they're holding it at a 45 degree angle you're going to get about uh, a foot, uh, maybe a little bit under a foot, but if you're holding it straight up, which I don't recommend holding it at a 90 degree angle, just because 
Um, that's not the correct way to be able to detect the obstacles. You want it to be at this angle, like how you would normally hold a traditional cane. So you'll get about a foot of uh, sensing uh, above your uh, head, which should be sufficient for uh, most uh, individuals that are trying to detect anything that they may potentially run into. Okay, right, thank you. And I've got one other one as well, um, while I'm talking. The, it links to other apps, which is great, like the public transport, the timetables. What about, you know, the, the What Three Words app? I mean, um, you know that one, that, you know the What Three Words app. Um, are there any plans for it to link to that particular app? Yeah, it's funny you should mention that because uh, uh, somebody had actually just mentioned that uh, recently as well. So we've shared that information with our R&D lead. Uh, as well as our product manager. And they're actually looking uh, into ways on how they can possibly integrate that. Because the nice thing about what, what three words is uh, many of you might already know is that you can assign unique three words in order to be able to uh, get a more precise location for whichever destination that you're getting to. Uh, right now, we don't have immediate plans for it. That's not to say that we're planning on that we're not planning on integrating in the future but uh, right now uh, it's something that we are looking into it, it has been brought up as uh, something that we'd like to possibly integrate in the near future um, however uh, we don't have immediate plans to add it to our app at the moment okay, well, thank I'm, you i'm just wondering about the public transport uh one thing is it is it possible to actually specify your public transport preferences. For example, I had a, a lady who I think she was using Move It and she just wanted buses. She wasn't interested in trains. She just wanted buses. And also what information does it give you? Does it tell you when your next bus is due or what the next bus is and that kind of stuff? Yeah, that's a great question. So our uh, data actually pulls from uh, MoveIt as well. So a lot of the same information that MoveIt has available will also be available in the WeWalk app. Uh, so things such as uh, arriving buses as well as metro lines, you can also filter by whether or not you want to see just buses or just metro lines directly through the app. So there is a filter built in. Uh, it'll show the timetables as well. So once you select a particular bus or metro line that you want to take, it'll have all of the timetables pulled up for the arrival times uh, for that particular bus. And then once you dig deeper into that, so if you select a particular bus line, it'll actually show every single stop that that bus line will make. A lot of uh, the same info, again, that uh, Move It would normally display. Also, when I, when I was looking in the preferences, there was an option that said, allow your name to be and now allow your name to be displayed on the leaderboard. What, what does that mean? Ah, yes. So that's something we're in the process of developing as well. One of the things we want to do is increase uh, independent mobility for uh, visually impaired people and encourage them to explore the world around them. So we're adding some gamification aspects as well. So we want people to go outside, use their smart canes and be more active. So that gamification leaderboard uh, section that you had found will allow users to compete with other WeWalk smart canes around the world to see who can get the more steps. We might have other challenges as well. So for example, one of the challenges we might have for the month is try to find five new places that you've never been to before through our exploration mode app. And you can compete in the spirit of healthy competition to see who can achieve the most goals and unlock badges. Great. Anybody else? Any other question? Yes, I've got a question. How Hi, Louise. Hello. Thank you so much for your presentation. It's been absolutely fascinating. And it's also like really exciting to know that this kind of technology is out there. Um, what I would like to know is how heavy is the handle, please? Yeah, the handle itself uh, with the cane is about 360 grams to 370 grams. And the reason I give that range is because you can actually purchase the cane in three different sizes. Uh, we have the 47 inch, 51 inch, and uh, 50, I'm sorry, 47 inch, 54 inch, and 59 inch version. So the weight will differ based on the cane size that uh, you select. So it's about 360 to 370 grams. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're very welcome. Thanks, Louise. Are there any other questions? 
Yeah, it's uh, Vicky here. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Vicky. So when, when you say there's different sizes, what's that relate to? The size of the person, the size of the cane, or does it, is, is there uh, any distinction? Because I've not heard that one before. Yes, it's the total size of the cane. So it'd be from, I'm displaying on the screen right now, the tip of the top of the smart handle to the very bottom of the cane. So it would be all the way to the marshmallow tip that comes supplied with the cane. So that's the overall size. And we recommend that the total size reach the middle of the sternum of uh, the user or just below the underarm for proper sizing. So when someone is trying to select their size, we recommend that someone uh, measure it from the floor to the sternum or just below the underarm to get the proper sizing. Excellent, thank you. And if yeah. I was to use the app to go, because I'm going up to a theater in London on Saturday. So if I was to use it, um, I would need to walk to transport, transfer between transport and then walk the other end. So it will all be in the one app. because so I would just move from transport, get off the train or the bus and then move to the next walking directions. Yes, exactly. So if you were going to select a place that is quite far from where you're going, and if there's public transport available in your area, under the navigate feature, if you were to select that destination, WeWalk will automatically calculate, oh, there's public transit here, you can walk to this public transit, and then after you get off the public transit, you can walk to your final destination. Once you do that, it'll automatically show the various routes that you have to select from. So if, for example, you feel like walking, it might be, I don't know, a one hour walk in order to get to your destination. However, if there's bus or metro lines, in addition to walking, you'll have the option to take an Uber there if Uber is available in your area. You'll also have the option to be able to take a uh, combination of walking and bus routes, or if you have a train line, you'll also have that option. And then once you select that route, what it'll actually do is it'll show on the screen, it'll display navigate one of four. So you know this is the first step in your navigation, which may be walking from your home or your current location to the bus or train line. Once you arrive at the bus or train line, it'll move on to the next step, which is step two of four, which is boarding the bus or train line. And it'll show the arrival time and it'll automatically pull this up. It'll show the arrival time of the bus or metro line that you need to take. Once you get on that bus or metro line, it'll automatically select the stop that you need to get off at. Mm. And then we'll move to the next step, which might be step three of four or step four of four, uh, depending on where you're at in your journey. And the final step might be to take you from the bus or metro line that you just got off at to your final destination. So at every step of your journey, it's showing how to get to the bus or metro line, what stop you need to get off at, when to get off the stop, and then finally how to get to your destination. Well, that does sound amazing. I'll <laughs> test it on Saturday and report back. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> but I, but, but I will just be doing it through the app, which I'm on a 14 day free trial at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, can I just ask, I'm Juji uh, from Support for Sight. Can I just ask, um, so obviously you need to have like kind of internet connection all the time to be kind of up to date with, you know, what's happening with your transport and various things. But I'm guessing that's the case. Yeah. So if you in an area where you don't have internet or Wi-Fi, then none of it will work but I'm just wondering like kind of can you set up your journey at home um, and then what happens if your internet goes down ah yes does that make sense the question yeah. good question good question yeah it, it's a very good question as well uh, so it does rely on some sort of LTE connection so if you don't have internet unfortunately you won't be able to use the application one thing we have been exploring for uh, future iterations of the WeWalk app is perhaps uh, we could include maybe like a download an offline map option mm -hmm. uh, so that if internet does go out, they won't be stuck somewhere uh, not knowing exactly how to get to their destination. So we don't have the option just yet, okay. but it does rely on some sort of internet connection in order to be able to use it. And um Am I right to think that your your um, device and your your app is actually worldwide, so it can be used anywhere? It's not specific 
to one area like it's not like you mapped london out but then you can't use it in new york you can actually use it wherever you are yeah yes that's correct okay. so our app pulls from various data sources so for example our navigation system uses a combination of google maps data okay. google data as well as foursquare data uh, the one exception would be uh, if, for example, maybe you are vacationing somewhere where Foursquare isn't heavily used, maybe you're traveling yeah, of course. To, uh, like somewhere very desolate where there might not be a lot of points. Of course, of, of course, yeah. Not be used. That's where there would be cases where it might not work. But Google Maps, if there's coverage with Google Maps somewhere, our app will work as well. And um, do you have the app in English only or do you do it in other languages or is it only yes. in English? We have it available in English. Our training at the moment is only available in English and Turkish. Mm -hmm. However, we're looking to expand that beyond just English and Turkish in the future. We have support for 10 different languages. So we have cool. it in German, uh, French, English, Arabic, uh, Portuguese. So we have uh, quite an extensive uh, support system. Thank you. And are you okay to talk about price? Uh, yeah, uh, Old John is available on the call as well. So in terms of price, well, we can share that information as well. So thank you. Hi, Old John. Hi. So uh, for the price in the UK, um, we sell each unit for uh, seven fifty uh, pounds. Uh, so for the application, uh, you know, we have a free trial at the moment. Uh, but we uh, sometimes we make special campaigns, but in regular time it is uh, it is a bit uh, it is a bit uh, sorry sorry I, I'm just checking in uh, each region we provide different pricing so this is why I'm just thinking about the uh, UK price it should be uh, nine ninety nine uh, per month but as uh, as I mentioned we make some um, you know special campaigns. So you can check the application uh, and you can see the uh, updated price as well as our digital marketing team makes different campaigns. Uh, but uh, for free, uh, 14 days, we have free trial. Uh, so you can test the application uh, and for free. And if you have any questions, uh, you can let us know. So that's for the app and how much the cane cost? It is... Uh, the cane cost is uh, 650 pounds. Okay, thank you. But, but obviously you in order cane, to... App is free. If you have cane, app is free. Oh, okay. But in order to try it, you have to buy the 650 pound cane, try it, and then if you're not happy, can you send the cane back and get your money back? Or Yeah, so we, we okay. have a uh, money back guarantee. Okay, uh, great. Right, Joe, what was the day for the UK? In how many days? Uh, yeah, so you, uh, we have a 30-day trial window. So if you're not satisfied with it or you don't feel like it's right for you, uh, you can return it to us. Just contact us directly and we can arrange. Uh, the only Thank thing you. that we uh, charge for is for uh, the return shipping. Uh, of but course. Everything else is covered as well. So we want to make sure, again, it's one of those things that's fit for purpose for your daily lifestyle. So that's why we are... Mm -hmm. Uh, supporting with that 30 day uh, money back guarantee as well. So, if you buy the cane, that the app is free, is the app stays free for the user for forever? And then, obviously, any update that's been made to the app, the user will be able to access that for free too. Is no extra cost after a year or anything like that. Yes, that's correct. Great. So Thank the software you. Software updates. Yeah, you're very welcome. The software updates get downloaded directly yeah. from. The store uh, and then the firmware updates for the device uh, they don't come out very often but it's like a computer where you want to leave it alone when it's doing the firmware update but of that course over wi-fi as well yeah great thank you sounds yeah, really good welcome. thank you okay, okay folks. Um, thank you so much for coming it was a great talk yeah, very thanks. great product live well and future vision we hope you enjoyed this presentation the Live Well events take place on the second Thursday of each month at 10am. Future Vision sessions take place on the fourth Thursday of each month at 10am and are technology events aimed at people living with sight loss. To attend the next session or to suggest future topics, 
please contact your local Site Society who will be able to provide you with the Zoom link.